What is going on everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Alberta Source Battle Damage from Mattel. Now first things first, I checked on BrickSeek and uh, it said my local Walmart had two of these. So I went there after work and there it was on the shelf. They had two. So, this is a Battle Damage product. So that means it is a exclusive only to Walmart. So definitely a uh, Check Brick Seek or just go to your local Walmart to see if they have them in stock. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, beautiful box. In the top corner, we got the Jurassic World logo. We move on down, and then we got the Rexy right there. I believe this is also on the Biden fight. And then the title, what it is, with the battle damage marks underneath there. It's a nice touch. And of course, we have the battle damage look right there. We move on up to see the yellow orangish look to the Jurassic World logo. And it turns to black as it goes this way, which is really nice. And then, of course, we got the Alberta Source right there. It's a really nice looking package. So let's turn this around and see what else we got. All right, so gonna go look at the box right there, and then the gimmick is a two version one. Well, three if you count that two, and then three. And then here's some look at those, which I think blue and the stickies the only repack. And then we got the right there. Really cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom of the package, guys. For the UPC, all you gotta do is just take this, go to Brickseek's, uh, Walmart's Brickseek page and type it in to see if your local store has it. All right, so let's get him taken out, or I should say hold her. So, I'm just gonna cut these right here. There's Did it cut? Nope. All right. Oop, still one more. And there she is. Let's move this box out of the way. But first, it says there's something in there. Just want to cover everything. Looks like it is the instruction for it. Yep. Okay, just showing you how the gimmick works. Nothing too special. All right, so. Here is the awesome Alberta source. So let's go ahead and just start with the head first. Bring this light right here. All right. So the articulation on the head, it is a very nice range of motion. As you can tell. I really like it. The detail in the head is really nice. Got the scales, the spikes right here on top of the head. Just the overall sculpt of this is really nice. Really cool. Got the nice uh, beige coloring right on the lower jaw. Then it turns to this green color and then red. Now one thing I do wish that they did was have this red color going all the way down on the back. Get a good shot of the eyes right there. And then one thing I noticed opening the mouth, it's really stiff. 
Let's get a good, nice look at the te teeth. Really cool. And then, of course, we've got a nice texture going on on the tongue. Hope you guys can see that. Okay, so let's move on down. The belly's not painted or has that crocodile look like say, like what the T-Rex has. It's just the uh, same sculpt that you see up here. The arms move up and down. It can't move out like a pivot. Which, oh well, it's okay. Uh, the finger claws are not painted unfortunately, but the toe claws are. Okay. So let's take a look at the sculpt right here on the back. It looks really cool. And then I'm sure you guys are wanting to take a look at the scan code, which there it is. And on the bottom of this foot, we have the Jurassic World logo stamp. What I really like about this is that we have this really nice detailed painted uh, scar on the leg. This is probably one of the nicest ones that Mattel has done for the line. Which it looks like it's only available right there. Now we got articulation in the legs. Which could move all the way around like that. Which is uh, pretty funny looking. Alright, so let's bring the legs back down. We have a little swivel right here on the ankle. And then, as always with these Mattel lines, we have the legs that swivel out like that. Which I'm glad they done it for this. And of course, we have the articulation in the tail. It can move up, down, it can go sideways. And then, I mean, it's a pretty stiff joint, which is nice. So let's take a look at this other side. We have some nice detail in the legs. The detail is not as crisp as like what we have in the head right here, which no biggie. I mean, I, I'm definitely a fan of this. Mattel, you guys have done it once again. It, it just shows how much you guys care about this line making the fans happy. All right. So let's get a good look at the dino damage that this has. So right here we got, it's it's an okay sculpt. It's kind of dulled down maybe a little more than the body is. It is also a different shade of green. So what we do is we push it down to reveal that. And then we have the bones that are up there but this part right here like the guts it's squishy it's a really nice touch that they did I'm really glad that uh, Mattel has done that and then to bring the bones down you just bring them down like that yeah really nice so I wonder if you keep it down yep really cool so I'm sure all you guys are wanting to see a comparison so let's go ahead and bring in other dinosaurs all right so let's go ahead and do some size comparisons so let's first start with the first dinosaur on the tour the Dilophosaurus so this right here is part of the Target exclusive pack right here. So just so you guys can see how big this Abertosaurus is compared to the smaller dinosaurs we have had in this line, which of course is the Dilophosaurus. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in another legacy item, which is 
Dr. Alan Grant. So let's put him right under the Albertosaurus. So as you can tell, over which is nice size. Let's go ahead and bring in another legacy item. And this is the brand new repaint of the Extreme Chomping Rex. And I said it was the Jurassic Park 3 T-Rex, but I'm just going to go ahead and call it what all the other fans are calling it, which is the Buck from the Lost World. I mean, you guys could take it however you want it. So, there is the Albertosaurus compared to the Extreme Chomping Rex. Alright. Let's take the buck out. So let's just stick with the legacy items for being the first ones right now. So we will be bringing in probably the most anticipated item of the legacy collection and that is of course the Spinosaurus just look how big this Spinosaurus towers over the Albertosaurus now a lot of people can't get the Spinosaurus in this pose because of the loose legs but the one I bought first on eBay didn't seem to have a problem with the loose legs. This has been in the same pose for quite a while now. A lot bigger. So, without knocking the Albertosaurus over, um, I have the baby T-Rex right there. We have the regular line of the Roar of Wars for Wave 1, the Allosaurus, which is probably one of my favorite Roar of Wars that we've had. So get it in right there. The Albertosaurus is taller. So next, we will be bringing in. Another hard one to find from Wave 1 War of Wars, which is the Baryonyx. So let's go ahead and bring it in. Now if you're wondering how the mouth is closed, I just stuck something in that little joint right there. Close it up pretty nice. Next we have another Roar of War, Roar of War and this is from Wave 2 and it is the Carnotaurus. I said that wrong. It is not the Carnotaurus. I'm sorry guys. Ceratosaurus. I was looking at the Carnotaurus when I grabbed it. Alright, so again the Albertosaurus is bigger. And then move him up a little because I know this is going to be bigger. We have the Sukamimus. Body wise, they are pretty much about the same, but with the pose, how the Sukamimus is with the raised up head, it is bigger than the Albertosaurus, but not by much, guys. Here, now that I move the legs, okay, the Sukamimus a little bit taller than the Albertosaurus. I mean, I think they were around the same price point, around nineteen dollars. I still have yet to find the new, new one yet. All right, so I know a lot of questions have been going around about how much. Uh, how this one compares to say the Carnotaurus so I'm going to be bringing the Carnotaurus right now 
All right, so here is the Carnotaurus. <clears throat> now, due to how the legs are on the Carnotaurus, it does stand taller. As you can tell, the Carnotaurus's tail is also longer. But overall, it's pretty decent size compared to them both. I would like to see another Carnotaurus in this scale right here. Maybe just a different pose with the legs. All right, there's one more to bring in, guys. And I also seen this at Walmart after work when I went to pick this guy up to see if they had it on shelves. And... I didn't get it because it's the first Dino Rivals that I bought. And it is the Biden Fight Trainosaurus Rex. Just look how much bigger this Biden Fight Rex is compared to the Elbertosaurus. Really cool two products right here, guys. All right, so an overall view thought of this. It's a really nice product, guys. Definitely worth the money. Uh, like I said, the only thing I have probably a gripe about this is the red paint. Don't go all the way down its back, but it's a no biggie. The sculpt on here is phenomenal. The paint on here is phenomenal. Even the new dino damage that we have is great. The, I, I really do like how stiff the bottom jaw is to get it open. I don't know why. I just like it a lot. But yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video of the Alberta source. I know I'm not the first one to post it. I know the Jurassic Outpost page did a premiere on it that I was in on. I watched it pretty good review so i hope you guys enjoyed this uh if you have any questions about it please drop it in the comments below and i will try to answer it and as always thank you guys so much helping out this channel making it grow i will keep on doing videos like this as long as i got a fan base so thank you so much again hit that like button please subscribe to this channel